Okay. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about road signs, traffic signs. Yes, actually reading these, knowing the classifications will make you a safer, more predictable driver. Uh, yeah, messing around with my things here. <laughs> Stick around, we'll be right back with that information. And it didn't work. And according to vidIQ, I'm supposed to drop the intro anyway. So, you know, trying to say something clever and nothing's coming to mind. Uh, my friend Z is here. Hello, hello. Mallory is here from the Maritimes. Rocky's here from Ontario. And Evan is here. Uh, why is that? Why would the only cases uh, for going anywhere over the speed limit? Good question, Evan. And definitely something that we can talk about during the discussion period about traffic flow, why police officers don't pull you over. It has a lot to do with the tolerances on radar guns, the accepted culture of traffic and traffic flow and those types of things. But tonight, as I said, we're going to talk about uh, road signs, traffic signs, reading traffic signs, and being able to glean the information from traffic signs at a glance because they are classified regulatory signs. Regulatory signs don't need, aren't as, uh, standardized as cautionary signs, but they are standardized railway crossing signs, stop signs, uh, speed signs, those are all examples of regulatory signs. And of course, for new drivers, you need to understand stop signs and you need to know the difference between two-way stop signs and four-way stop sign intersections because the procedures and right-of-way rules at these two different stop sign intersections is different. So we'll have a look at all of that. Corey is here, Bricks for Wheels. Uh, Corey is the moderator, does an excellent, excellent job of getting up uh, videos that I suggest you have a look at for further details on dis uh, topics that we're discussing, <laughs> topics that we're discussing uh, for the purposes of passing your driver's test, becoming a safer, smarter driver and whatnot. Uh, Buify, hello my friend, Tyler is here, and uh, Rocky, uh, new year so far has been excellent, absolutely excellent, it's busy here at the Smart Drive Test uh, website, we got a lot going on, we're building a team, got an assistant, uh, Jesse is doing an absolutely awesome job of keeping up the social media posts, uh, we started doing uh, one short every day uh, at last the end of last year, October 25th. As uh, some of you know or may not know, I went to a conference on video and YouTube and you know earning income online through video. And one of the things uh, that none of the speakers talked about was YouTube Shorts. So I thought that YouTube Shorts was an excellent opportunity, not just on this platform, but on TikTok, uh, IG, <laughs> Twitter, all of the other social media platforms. So we're doing one short a day and uh, it is doing really well. So, uh, you know, building a team, I have somebody who's doing animation for me as well, uh, which is an incredible opportunity because, you know, we can just increase the ability to teach and get across the message so much better uh, for smart drivers and whatnot, especially those who are doing CDL stuff. So we're working on that as well. And uh, getting somebody, uh, working on getting somebody to help me with the website because there's just there's just so much to do but uh, you know it's 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 really great really great and uh, we're not even in the busy time of the year yet <laughs> summer's coming uh, Tyler yesterday had to go past the stop line at the stop sign because the car behind me was riding uh, my butt uh, didn't I would have got rear-ended uh, excellent yes and you definitely have that space that you can move up if somebody's tailgating you from behind you can definitely move a little bit farther because there is about half a car length between the stop line and uh, before you enter the intersection so yes definitely do that my friend John how are you uh, Buify my road test is coming up in March you're gonna do great good luck on that uh, remember to breathe get lots of practice in practice your slow speed maneuvers those will improve your overall driving ability can't stress that enough Wendy said she passed her air brakes permit test. That is awesome, Wendy. Congratulations. Now, Wendy, if I recall, you were doing your air brakes to drive school bus. Is that correct? Or are you going on to become a truck driver? Just let me know here in the comments. Aloha. Hello, McRoy. Hello, hello, hello. I'm sure it's lovely there in Hawaii. 
Excellent. So the way it works here is I will do a short presentation. I'm pretty sure the presentation is going to work, unlike the uh, unlike what was I thinking? The introduction, which didn't work. Yes, <laughs> I was going to tell you another story, but uh, my daughter, before we started the live stream, was working on carrot cake. She was making carrot cake, and I was helping her with that. And we were trying to sieve the icing sugar, and it was a very long <laughs> exercise of about an hour and she was still doing that and I was wondering what she was doing and then I realized that the sifter wasn't working and it threw it in the bin. We'll go get another one. So that's what we were doing before the live stream tonight was working on the uh, carrot cake. We're just uh, waiting for the cake to cool because so we can put the cheesecake icing on it because you know that's uh, the cream cheese icing because of course carrot cake has to have che cream cheese icing. There we go. Tria, uh, my road test is the first week of air, uh, April. Aloha, aloha to you as well. Uh, Rocky says, summer coming up indeed, even spring at first. Yes, we're looking forward to that. Uh, Wendy, thank you. I'm going for a school bus to academy bus uh, company, a coach bus. Okay, so you're going to be driving a coach bus. Awesome. Uh, and uh, Wendy, if you have any questions about that, let me know because I did drive buses for Greyhound while I was in Australia and I did a little bit of work uh, with one of the tour companies, one of the coach companies uh, did tours down to the Ferry Penguins. Uh, not a lot, couple of runs, but uh, do have a little experience doing that. Uh, John, do you have any videos on how to enter and to exit roundabouts? Yes, we do. And Corey will put that up for you. So as I was saying previously, I got kind of distracted there about what I was, what I was saying. Um, <clears throat> we do the presentation 10 or 12 minutes. And then we come back and we'll answer any questions you have about passing a driver's test. Uh, we'll talk about anything related to driving. Uh, we can even, you know, go off on tangents a little bit, talk about making carrot cake and whatnot. But uh, we'll, so we'll get over to the presentation here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And get going on that. And my friend Tim has just popped in. My friend Tim from Drive Smart BC. If you want to know anything in the province of British Columbia about traffic safety, highways, policing court cases related to traffic definitely check out Tim's site over at Drive Smart BC uh, Corey will put the link up for that as well as well he has a forum out there are on the website rather where traffic safety experts get together and discuss different topics so head over and check that out all right traffic signs let's get going on that road signs so road signs are classified I've talked about the classifications of driver signs these will make you more predictable because roads are not out to trick you. There is information along the roadways that will help you out as well. The uh, traffic signs will help you to navigate the roadway at night because they're reflective and they'll help you be able to find the roadways and those types of things. And of course, in the wintertime right now, while well, the road markings are off, especially those, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, you know, some of these aren't as reflective as they could be, but they still are. For those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. I was a truck driver in the 1990s. I uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Went to the University of Melbourne in the first decade of the 20th century, 21st century, and graduated in 2006 with my doctorate in legal history, which is a study of policing, courts, and prisons. My expertise is in policing uh, as it relates to traffic, <clears throat> which is very much the kind of order maintenance branch of what traffic or what police do <laughs> unlike what we saw with the freedom convoy the instrument of the state which is the other theory of policing uh while i was going to university at uh, melbourne there in australia i drove buses for greyhound and one of the regional bus lines as well as i said i did a little bit of uh, driving for one of the uh, tour bus companies there as well and uh, if you want to know more about me uh, you can check out my autobiography over at the Smart Drive Test website channel there. All right, so as I was saying, new uh, stories are new shorts, video shorts every day, one every day at 9 a.m. I'm putting them up in the morning. Uh, merging, what are continuity lines, avoiding potholes. Yes, we have a video for just about everything here on this channel, so be sure to check those out in the morning at 9 a.m. Every day I have a new one. You can go over to TikTok, they're over there as well or IG, we put them up on the reels. So be sure to check that out, okay? Shapes of signs, the colors and the words or symbols thereon relay the information that you need to be safer, smarter driver on the roadway. And these are black markings on an orange background 
and these are construction signs and the pylons are orange with black markings as well. So know that, that uh, orange signs with black markings indicate temporary road conditions and usually construction signs and keep an eye out for construction signs because you may have to deviate from the normal road path that you're going to take through the construction zone. There may be arrows and other signs and maybe even flag people who give you a different route through and close lanes of traffic and those types of things off. So the different classes of traffic signs, regulatory signs, school signs, cautionary signs, lane control signs, these are usually overhead. They have a black background with white arrows on them to indicate which direction you can travel on that section of road or in that lane. And then object marker signs or hazard obstruction signs, which tell you fixed objects on the roadway and which side to pass on the hazard obstruction sign. Hazard obstruction signs or object marker signs as they're sometimes called and of course it's confusing because they're given different names. Essentially they just tell you what fixed objects are. The bridge abutments, uh, curbs along the roadway, traffic islands, those types of things. So these are the most prolific signs on the roadway. Once you start looking for these, the chevrons, you will find them absolutely everywhere and they're important for larger vehicles if you're driving a big pickup truck you're driving a commercial vehicle a bus or a truck or if you're driving a truck and a trailer to note these signs and to figure out where the fixed objects are that you could strike because i see all kinds of people driving up on the traffic islands driving over traffic islands curbs and those types of things so know where the fixed objects are the way that you know on which side to pass imagine a tea kettle pouring water on the on the markings there and which side the water pours off is the sign is the side of the fixed object on which you are to pass so take note of those different kinds of regulatory signs are stop signs speed signs railway crossing signs and brake check signs for those of you who are driving commercial vehicles if you see a brake check sign you must pull in do an inspection on your vehicle and make sure that your brakes are in shape to be able to go down the hill. And if you're pulling a caravan or you're pulling a horse trailer or any other kind of trailer that's got some weight on it with a pickup truck, make sure that you pull in and check your brakes and other vehicles as well, or other components of the vehicle as well. Uh, know that here in the mountains in Western Canada in the summertime, we have lots of caravans that need to pull into these brake check areas because what happens is they start going down the hill it's a long downhill uh, they don't have a transmission cooler they're hauling extra weight and what happens is the transmission essentially overheats and it implodes so know that about pulling into uh, these brake check areas not just for commercial vehicles but for trucks and trailers as well uh, warning signs are diamond in shape yellow backgrounds and have information in black lettering on them some are relevant not so much you know, curve signs at 45 miles an hour. If you're driving a sports car, you can probably go around at 45 or 50 miles an hour. In other cases, for example, you're coming off a freeway and there will be one of these cautionary signs giving you a suggested speed. If you're not familiar with getting off that freeway and haven't been, ever been on that exit before, then it is suggested that you get down to that speed before you go around that corner. If you are going around in a truck and trailer or you're going around in a big truck and trailer, then you definitely want to be down to that speed if you've never been around that corner before because trucks and trailers and big trucks and trailers have a habit of when you go too fast around a corner laying over like a dead pig. And uh, dispatch tends to get really excited when you call them up and tell them you rolled the truck over on a curb because you were going too fast. The one on the top is a height sign and not very important for most personal vehicles, recreational vehicles, if you're pulling a caravan and those types of things. But if you are hauling CDL or you're driving a bus, you need to know that in the United States, the maximum height for a commercial vehicle is 13 feet, 6 inches. In Canada, it is 4.15 meters, okay? If your vehicle is higher than those signs or those signs do not say that, for example, if you come up against this 11 foot, 8 inches sign and you're driving a commercial vehicle, find another route or before you go under get out and look and make sure that you're absolutely positive that your vehicle in fact will go underneath that bridge or overpass larger vehicles destination signs overhead signs match the speed of the flow of traffic 
okay unless you're hauling up hills and you got one of these big trucks and you're fully loaded with four horses in it and hay and you know all the other accessories that you need you're probably not going to go the flow of traffic okay but these destination signs will tell you the distance to the next town or city or amenities villages and those types of things so have a look at those take note of the signs they're very important and will i know that we live in a day and age of gps you know navigation on our phones and those types of things but you have no idea how important it is if you want to be a smarter safer driver to take note of the road signs along the roadway okay lane usage signs be sure you're in the correct lane on a driver's test and I did do a video here, uh, I don't know, last week, I think, about turning left. Make sure that you're in the outside lane so that when you get around the corner, you're in the right lane. You always want to be in the outside lane for bigger vehicles to compensate for the off-tracking. The off-tracking is simply that the rear wheels take a shorter path than the front wheels. And there's going to be more off-tracking the bigger the vehicle is. <clears throat> okay, these are often overhead. And as I said, right now with the road markings being worn off the roadways because of winter and plowing and those types of things, you definitely want to look overhead and figure out which lane that you need to be in, especially if you're driving in an area that you are not familiar with. Mile marker signs. These will make you definitely a smarter driver on a freeway because you can take note of the mile marker signs or get them off your GPS or Google or whatever else. Navig what other navigation system that you're using and say for example you're at mile marker 270 and you're getting off at 274 well you know you'll have four miles between where you are now and when you're getting off the freeway or interstate and in that four miles you can start moving over to the right in preparation for getting off to that off ramp and that way at the last minute when you get to 274 you're not going to be cutting off other traffic trying to fight your way over and getting off the freeway Okay, the exit numbers, as I said, often match up with the mile markers, and you can see that here at the top, exit 256, that's the same as the mile marker. So good luck on your driver's test, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So get back over here, main camera, there we go, okay. 52, if I'm trying to make a right turn at a stoplight, do I stop before the line, then move forward to see traffic coming, or do I automatically pass the line with stopping so I can see oncoming? Excellent question, 52. Yes, and uh, I've got a video in the hopper here where I'm talking about unexpected things. And as you just said, turning right on a red light is one of those unexpected things that you may need to do every now and again when you're driving. It may or may not happen on your driver's test, you have to stop at the correct position. So yes, stop behind the stop line first. Give way to all of the road users, pedestrians, cyclists, people on scooters, skaters, those types of things. Then move up so you can see. Give way to all of the road users again. When the way is clear, then you can proceed. The other uh, consideration when you're turning right on a red light is to make sure that the traffic opposite does not have an advanced green and are not turning left as you're trying to make the right on the red. Now for the purposes of a driver's test, turning right on a red light, if it's busy, you can wait for the green. If it's not busy, then you have to turn, okay? Because the driving examiner will get a little, you know, frustrated. They're like, why are we sitting here? We can go. There's nobody in the intersection. So if it's not busy, you have to go. If it is busy, you can wait for the green light if you're turning right on a red light. Uh, Tim, some pickups qualify to follow mandatory brake checks depending on what they are pulling. Most of those drivers do not consider themselves to be commercials, uh, commercial vehicles. Uh, yeah, and if they are, uh, they're not exempt like farms, but uh, there are the, a perfect example of that, Tim, would be uh, pickup trucks that are loaded with trusses. Uh, lots of, they use pickup trucks because trusses aren't that heavy, uh, like roof trusses for construction. Uh, they put them on the trailer, send them out, and they are subject to going into a way scale to be, uh, to be inspected, and they have to stop for the brake checks as well. So know that if you get into a vehicle and you're working for a company and they're pulling, uh, using pickup trucks to transport freight and those types of things. So yes, there are quite a number of different pickup trucks that are subject to keeping log books, going into scale houses, pulling over brake checks and, and whatnot. Uh, Sakina, 
Thank you for your diligence in teaching others how to be safe, confident drivers, and you are most welcome. Thank you for that vote of confidence. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, Tim, look for a video about what to do when the traffic light turns green today to embed in my article on the subject. Didn't find one directly on the topic. Did I miss one? Uh, what to do when the traffic light turns green? Uh, oh, okay. So, Tim, are you looking for a video specifically about, so you're stopped, you're waiting for the traffic light to turn green, the traffic light turns green, and then before you proceed through the intersection, is that what you're looking for? So scanning left, center, right, and then left again, and then proceeding through the intersection. Is that what you're, was that what you were looking for, Tim? Because I can, I can find one, I can make one of those for you if that's what you're looking for. Okay. Allwood, uh, what is the speed limit when doing your driver's test? Uh, Allwood, the speed limit is the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. So for example, most of the time you're going to do the posted speed limit. However, there are circumstances where you can go slower so the less road space is you can go slower so for example if you're on a residential street and there's cars parked on both sides of the road and you have to come out and there's you know it's basically one lane especially now in the winter time with snow banks and whatnot then you can slow down right if you're on a street where there's lots of pedestrian traffic then you can slow down but most of the time you're going to have to do this posted speed limit Corey will put the video up for you on past the mock driver's test video that I have. You can see how fast I'm going in a residential area there because there's a lot of times where you're turning left and right, the instructors or the examiner rather is trying to figure out what you're doing. You're not really going to get up to speed. So know that, but for the, you know, you have to get up to speed as best you can, especially if you're out on some of the major roads and whatnot. Okay. Oh, okay, Tim. Uh, I'll get that. I'll get that up for you. Actually, that would make a really good short uh, video, and I can I can get that up for you. It'd be really quick. Uh, Bu Buify, uh, how can you enter a cul-de-sac? Okay, so cul-de-sacs for most driving examiners present an opportunity for you to do a U-turn. And again, Corey will put the video up for you on the U-turn because they just want you to do a U-turn and basically you're gonna you know, go to the right, you're gonna shoulder check, you're gonna signal or that you're gonna go around to the right and then you're gonna come back around. So that's basically it. Uh, if you're not doing your driver's test and you're in a cul-de-sac, you just you know, stay to the right and come around and come back and go out the other way. But if you're on your driver's test, treat it as, it, as you would for a U-turn. And like I said, Corey will put up the video on U-turns there. Uh, Ruben, I once got pulled over for not driving in the right lane on a freeway in Los Angeles. I was driving a U-Haul truck. Uh, did I miss a slower traffic keep right sign? <laughs> uh, Ruben, <laughs> just the fact that you were driving a U-Haul and you were in the left lane was probably the reason you got pulled over because the officer just assumed that you were holding up and impeding traffic. Uh, didn't have anything to do with the fact that you missed the sign. It just had the fact to do that you were on the freeway in a U-Haul truck. So yeah, that's 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 why. That's that's the big big <laughs> universal sign that you're you shouldn't be in the left-hand lane in a U-Haul truck because most of them are governed. They'll only do like 55 or 60 miles an hour. So you know, traffic must have been going pretty slow if you were out in the left-hand lane. Uh, Mallory, just wondering if you have any advice about four-way intersections that used to be two-way intersections for drivers. Uh, Mallory, really no advice other than the fact that you need to take note of, you know, that it's changed from a two-way to a four-way. Most of the time when they take uh, two-way stop-signed intersections and change them into four-ways, they don't usually change them into four-ways. Usually what they do is they put in a roundabout, but I guess the city or town where you live didn't want to spend the extra money to put in the roundabout, so they just put up another couple of stop signs. I mean, we have one intersection here in town that they've recently done that to as well, so I don't know if they're preparing for it to be put in as a roundabout. It would make a lot more sense. You know, I'm all for roundabouts, as you know. Uh, Matt, watch for hidden 40 kilometer an hour zones uh, on your driver's test. Yes, for sure, because uh, as I said, I lived here for three or four years and didn't know that down by Kalamalka Lake, 
that uh, the beach that we have a 40 kilometer an hour zone until I was doing the videos with uh, Gavin that there's a 40 kilometer an hour zone down there so you know definitely practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test that way you're going to be able to figure out where the 40 kilometer an hour zones are and this is another thing about the traffic signs figuring out different traffic signs dig figuring out where roadways are going to end and you're going to have to merge over to the left hand lane and those types of things so definitely figure out where the speed zones are what the different speed zones are because there's going to be different places where it's going to go you know 30 30 miles an hour and then it's going to go 40 miles an hour and it'll go back to 30 or it'll go back to 25 miles an hour so you definitely have to practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test uh <laughs> and they're not hidden speed zones very few of them are hidden but they are will catch you unexpectedly there is one and i mean the other one here in western canada is the speed school or not school playground speed signs right it's a regular a cautionary playground sign but underneath it has a regulatory speed sign and they're in effect from sun up to sundown so know know those and take uh take note of those and know where they are because we have one here two blocks from where I live there's a playground and it's 30 kilometers an hour so uh, I'm still looking to fi find out if they have those in the states as well uh, Crystal I'm doing well uh, Valentine's Day was good uh, I was just uh, what happened on Valentine's Day oh I think it was just me by myself the kids were at school uh, you know we were all working and doing that sort of thing so there you go uh, how was your Valentine's Day Crystal Tyler, my town has a five-way intersection in the left turn lane. You can turn left down a two-way street and go straight, then turn left down a one-way street. So, yeah, that's definitely one of those places, Tyler, that you want to uh, practice, especially if it's within the vicinity of the test center there where you live, for sure. Uh, Dwayne, uh, thanks so much for the test and passed. That is awesome. Congratulations, Dwayne. Thanks for stopping back and letting us know that you did, in fact, pass your driver's test. Congratulations. That is absolutely awesome news, my friend. Absolutely awesome. Uh, <laughs> Mallory, stop signs are not stop, stop sensational. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, they're not, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? That they're not, uh, you have to stop is what I'm trying to think. I was trying to think of the opposite, that you can or cannot. Uh, Rocky, isn't driving in poor weather very dumb and dangerous? Even a huge snow has well, uh, don't you agree? Uh, it depends on the weather. I mean, you know, if it's raining, I mean, you obviously can drive in the rain quite well as long as you have decent tires on your vehicle. And it's the same thing with driving in the winter time. I mean, we drove to Calgary, which is six and a half, seven hours from here in the winter time. I mean, it was super cold because uh, we stayed overnight in Golden. We got up the next morning and it was minus 35. But, you know, the buggy was winterized. It's got dedicated winter tires on it and it's an all wheel drive vehicle. And the roads were completely snow covered with hard pack. So, you know, it's it's safe as long as you you know take the appropriate skills employ the proper d driving uh, tactics and techniques uh, you're gonna be fine on the roadways Abigail congrats on your channel okay so your channel thank you I passed yesterday I did not read or study just watched your videos and followed all your advice thank you uh, your channel congratulations on passing your driver's test thank you for your kind words and stopping back and letting us know you passed your driver's test. That is absolutely awesome. Congratulations. Uh, what did you do to study, my friend? Uh, Richie, any advice before heading into driving lessons? Uh, Richie, yes, just kind of get in the car. Don't, you know, don't drive the car. Just get in the car and familiarize yourself with the secondary controls. Know how to turn on the heat. Know how to turn on the windshield wipers know how to turn on defrost and know how to turn on the headlights unless you have a newer car then the headlights will be automatic but you know those types of things just kind of get used to it uh, adjust the seat figure out how to do that the back you know because the back tilts back and forth like this the base of the seat moves forward and backwards so figure out what's comfortable uh, get the seat adjusted 
adjust the mirrors you know even if it's your parents car and it's not the car you're going to be training on different you know you want to get comfortable with different vehicles and whatnot so as long as you can get all of kind of comfortable with that then that's gonna make your driving lessons go a little bit faster because then the driving instructor doesn't have to work with you on those different kinds of things. So if you can get that set up first, that would be really great. Uh, Tyler, Rick, have you seen a five-way intersection before? How are they? Uh, Tyler, most of the five-way intersections that I've seen have not been stop signed intersections. Most of them have been uh, intersections with a roundabout. And yes, I have seen them, they do work well. Uh, you know, it's just those old colonial cities <laughs> that haven't been updated yet. And you've got five streets coming into the same place. So there you go. Uh, Crystal, my Valentine's Day was good. I spent it with my boyfriend. Uh, that is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, you know, the day of love. <laughs> Unlike the green arrow. <laughs> For those of you who've been watching that, I've been watching that the last two or three weeks on uh, Amazon. So there's the one villain. <laughs> Cupid is stupid. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Beautify, my boyfriend says don't rely on um, automatic headlights, the sensors can fail. Beautify, I tend to agree with you. Uh, I heard some stories today about new Volkswagens, which was did not bode well for me ever buying a new car. <laughs> I just don't know. Angelina, the one thing that has stressed me out was fog, but my newest vehicle has these awesome fog lights, so their rules on using them in fog because other drivers sometimes flash their lights at me. Uh, Angelina, yeah, if you are driving in traffic and there's other vehicles around, you may not want to use them, especially if other drivers are flashing their lights. It's apparent that you have one of those newer vehicles that have those uh, headlights on your vehicle that are just like super, super bright. Uh, but there are definitely advantages to fog lights on your vehicle. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, as I said, if other other vehicles are flashing you, then you know you should probably turn them off or try and figure out. They might need adjusted because what happens is on uh, some of these fog lights, they're not adjusted properly and they're shining up into the right into the eyes of oncoming drivers. So maybe you might want to take it into a mechanic or whatnot and get them to check and make sure that they are in fact adjusted properly, uh, and then you can use them. Uh, when you're driving in fog and those types of things. Uh, Angeline, you have a 2010 Cobalt. Okay, I'm not familiar with that vehicle, so maybe one of the other smart drivers uh, can give you some feedback about that. Uh, Tim says, I like your background. I need one of my own for Drive Smart BC. <laughs> uh, Tim, this background behind me, I, you know, this is kind of a collage of a bunch of maps and then I stuck some stuff over it. I had a whole bunch of these maps just sitting around in a box one day and I thought, you know, that I think that would make a really great uh, background. So, you know, there's a couple other things up there, but, you know, and I bought the shelves off Amazon, but uh, it was kind of a collage that I made over a period of time, but thank you. Uh, Gaston, as a trucker, how was your experience uh, showering in gas stations, uh, Gaston? Most of the truck stops, especially now, the, the showers are really good. Do take shower shoes with you, okay? Uh, Flip-flops so that you can wear them in the shower. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I just used Absorbing Junior because for those of you who do or don't know, uh, you will get a, a athlete's foot, which is kind of a fungus on your feet. And I used to just put Absorbing Junior. I don't even know if you can buy Absorbing Junior anymore. Uh, and I would just put that on my feet, and that that kills uh, that ki kills athlete's foot. Now there was one time that I kind of let it go, and I didn't because I ran out of Absorbing Junior, and uh, it can get pretty nasty if you let it go. So don't do that. Wear shower shoes uh, when you're in the showers. But a uh, couple of places, yeah, there are some bad memories of a couple that were pretty nasty. Uh, Gary, Indiana, was one, but you know, for the most part, they're really nice. You know, you take your stuff in, you have a shower, uh, they have room in them, you know, you don't have to sit on the toilet, they have a bench, uh, nice showers and those types of things. It's, it's a lot like being in a hotel when you take showers in uh, truck stops and whatnot. So, yeah, good. Uh, Matt, uh, starting the Class 1 Melt program in two weeks. Any advice before I start? Been watching a lot of your videos. Uh, Matt, are you here in British Columbia or are you taking it in another province? Just let me know that. 
Uh, Rocky, so I watched some of your videos saying you can't allow postpone in the winter time. Actually, though, could you tell me exactly what else is okay to avoid driving? Um, still, still worry about getting involved in a crash. Anyway, do you understand what I mean by that? Um, so, there, you know, Rocky, most of the time in the winter, the roads are going to be clear. They're going to be well sanded, well salted. You know, and as long as you have good tires on your vehicle and you're adhering to kind of all of the winter driving practices, you know, slowing back, slowing down back from where you actually want to stop, you know, not exceeding the, the, you know, conditions of the roadway and those types of things, checking for ice on the roads, making sure that you've got good traction and whatnot. I think, you know, most of the time with a bit of practice to winter drive and whatnot, you're going to be good to go in the winter time. Uh, you know, if it's snowing and blowing and drifting and whatnot, then you might want to reconsider and stay home. But, you know, that's rare. Like most, you know, 10 or 15% of the winter season, it's going to be roads are going to be undrivable. The rest of the time, the roads are going to be more or less drivable. So watch some of the videos on winter driving, how to get used to winter driving, you know, working in a parking lot, getting, you know, causing the vehicle to break loose, giving it too much acceleration or too much brake and then feeling how the vehicle responds, and I think you're gonna be okay driving in the winter time. Um, Angelina, it's weird, it's like one in every five vehicles that flashes me. Okay, so Angelina, if you've got 20% of the drivers on the roadway that are flashing you, then yes, I would definitely suggest you take your vehicle in and make sure that the fog lights are correctly adjusted because that, that's a lot of drivers who are uh, telling you that your, your lights are too bright. Or maybe you just have one of those new vehicles that has super bright lights. All right, uh, Tyler, my car's AC doesn't work because of the compressor is locked up and a computer module is broken, no defrost. Uh, your car's a Volkswagen. <laughs> uh, I'm chuckling. Tyler, because unfortunately getting your AC fixed in your car can sometimes be a bit expensive, but um, you know, cars are expensive period. That's just the way it is. Uh, we had to take the Audi in this week and new front bearings on it and uh, ouch, that was $2,500 to fix the wheel bearings on the front of her car. But you know, at one and the same time, uh, I spent $7,000 on the buggy last year, but Look at it this way, and I know that we're all hurting right now with inflation and the, and the cost of houses and the cost of cars and those types of things, but cars are expensive. You have to maintain them, and you think of it this way. You can go out and buy yourself a new pickup truck and have a $750 a month car payment. Well, that's only three, that's four, not even four payments, four months of payments for $2,500. You know, getting your car fixed is pretty cheap in relation, in comparison to a new car payment, because some of those new car payments can be absolutely crazy expensive. And not only are they absolutely crazy expensive, but now we're financing cars for seven years. You've got a car payment for seven years, and you still have the same vehicle. I mean, unfortunately, a lot of these car payments have gone upside down after five or six years. You owe more on the car than what the vehicle is actually worth which I don't really understand, but you know, I'm not, I'm not in automotive financing. So that's, you know, where we are in this kind of crazy world right now. Uh, Mallory here in the Maritimes these past few days, we've had heavy rain, wind, snow, and a light uh, night thunder. <laughs> Sounds like you're having winter, Mallory. Uh, good old Maritimes. My friend Epic, uh, speaking of lane ends merge left or right, there are two versions of it. One has a lane ending with brake lines. The other has the whole word written. Uh, school signs, US and Canada, yellow or neon green colors. And yes, and the other thing about school signs, uh, Epic, some of them are the older school signs, which are blue with white symbols on them. But the one commonality between most of the school signs is that they are all pentagon shaped. They basically, you know, look like a house with a roof on it. So they're mostly pentagon shapes. Uh, <laughs> Tim says, I don't feel so bad then. Spent $1,200 to get the AC fixed on my Tacoma. Yeah, the, the wheel bearings on the front of the Audi were 2,500 bucks. So <laughs> there you go. But uh, you know, 
uh, Tim the buggy last year, the, the $7,000 also included getting the rust fixed on it. So that was 2,500 bucks to get somebody to fix the rust on it. Uh, what else did I do to the buggy last year? Oh, I had to rebuild the back end. I put new brakes on it and I hadn't put brakes on it in since I bought it and I've had it for seven years now. So I never had a set of brakes on it. So new brakes, rebuilt the back end, the bushings in the back end. So there was there was a fair bit of work that was done on the on the buggy and it needs a bit more work because now it needs a timing belt, right? But as it is, <laughs> uh, Michael in Vancouver, I'm wondering recently that how to determine the rightmost lane is uh, right turn only. There would be right turn arrow on the end of the lane, but how do you know when far away intersection? Uh, Michael, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Are you asking me about the right turning lane and how you know when you get to the intersection? Uh, the other thing you can do, Michael, uh, is if you're trying to determine lane usage, look up and see if there are signs overhead, over top of the lane, because most of the time, if it is a specific lane that you're looking for, for example, your right turning lane, then there's going to be an overhead sign that's going to tell you the lane you're in is either right turning or it's straight through or whatnot, okay? So no, have a look at that. Uh, John, so Rick, how to overcome the fear of driving a vehicle, especially if you are a beginner? Uh, John, that's common that you're gonna have some anxiety around driving when you start driving, especially if you haven't had any experience previously driving, you haven't driven a lawnmower, or ridden a bicycle, or driven a tractor on the farm, or those types of things. One of the things that you need to do is you need to get in the vehicle, you need to spend some time in it, get familiar. Uh, as I was talking about earlier, for people who are getting ready for driving lessons, sit in the vehicle, adjust the seat, get comfortable, get the mirrors adjusted, and then figure out the secondary controls and what these different controls doing. And then, you know, maybe if you have a place where you can work in your driveway and just drive forward and then drive back, drive forward, drive back, and those types of things, work with a mentor as well. Do some slow speed maneuvers, find a place where you can just reverse for a couple of blocks. That All of that is going to help you out because slow speed maneuvers will improve your overall driving and make you a better driver because you're gonna know and learn where your vehicle is in space and place. You're gonna to learn to know where it is in relation to other fixed objects, you know, the curb, light standards, stop signs, those types of things. And you're gonna figure out where it is in relationship to other traffic. And, you know, work with mentors, work with people you trust, uh, take one or two driving lessons with a driving instructor if you're not gonna take some driver training. All of this is going to help you out and start to overcome that anxiety. And it's okay if you're a bit fearful at the beginning or you have some anxiety uh, you know that just keeps you sharp when you're driving and know that it is for the most part it is safe right with the with the right instruction driving is going to be safe and you're not going to crash you're not going to run into somebody else so those are some suggestions for you know overcoming your fear when you learn how to drive have a great night Tim all the best enjoy your dinner my friend Paul, uh, you just need to practice, practice, and practice. Yes, that's excellent. Angela, uh, it really helps to know which way I will be turning next, so seeing it would be easier. Okay, uh, Mallory, just wondering what happened to your Wednesday video this week. <laughs> Mallory, you're on the ball. It didn't happen. <laughs> I just, I got, I got stuck into some work for a client that I'm doing, and it's in the, it's in the hopper. I've got it done, Mallory. <laughs> I was thinking there's no point putting it up this weekend because uh, I'll just wait till Monday night and I'll stick it up. But I'll definitely, I'll make up for that, Mallory. Thank you for keeping me honest. Okay. Uh, Angeline, how does it work with the rules about driving with electronic devices when it comes to using Google Maps? Because without it, I'd gotten lost. I usually have my phone where I can't hear it. I can hear it, but not see it. Uh, Angelina, it's fine to have your phone on for using the GPS, okay? Like you said, as long as you can just hear it, then you're that's okay, you can use it. As long as you're not touching it, it's the same thing if you have a holder, and I would very much suggest that you get a holder for your phone, especially if you're using navigation, because it does increase your safety. And I have a holder for my phone. I didn't have a holder for my phone for a very long time, but when you're using navigation on the phone, 
that holder makes it so much better to just quickly have a glance at it, figure out where you're going, listen to it, uh, you know, get it hooked into your Bluetooth because then the audio instructions will come through the stereo in your vehicle and you will be able to hear it and whatnot. But, you know, as long as you're not touching the phone, as long as before you leave, you set it up, you put the address in it and then you just stick it up there and it, le it runs on its own and you're not touching it, you're absolutely fine. You can do that. Okay. Um, yeah, I need you to teach me how to drive. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen, but I can definitely help you out and recommend somebody to give you a hand to give you some driving lessons and whatnot. Uh, Tyler, I spent $1,700 on uh, st struts and bushings. Yeah, you sounds like you got a fair bit of work done there on your car there. Uh, Crystal, he bought me chocolates, candy, and three stuffed animals and decorations bears. Uh, went well today. I can turn right into a parking lot, but I can't turn left into one. Uh, Crystal, that's just a matter of time. Sounds like you had a great Valentine's Day with your boyfriend. That's awesome. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Who else is here? Okay. Oh, you're most welcome, Angelina. Okay, so I had a question here. Who did I have a question from? Let me just look here. TJ. I had a question from TJ about the parking brake and he was talking about wear and tear on the car. As long as you're using the parking brake, you're not gonna wear out the pawl in the transmission. You're not gonna wear out the transmission. And the, basically you just come up, you park, you come to a stop, you keep your foot on the foot brake, throw the, uh, put the parking brake on and put the transmission into drive. So that's the way that you do it. Um, just as long, it doesn't matter which order you do it, as long as you leave your foot on the foot brake and then you know put the transmission into drive and apply the parking brake and then release the foot brake. It doesn't matter which order you do it. Uh, you know, just the fact that you are using the parking brake is going to save the transmission in your vehicle because I see people who drive vehicles with automatic transmissions all the time and they come to a stop and you know exactly what they did. They just put the brake on and they threw it into park and they didn't apply the parking brake and the vehicle rocks. You can see it rock and you know. You're just like, yeah, you didn't you didn't apply the parking brake. So that's what happened. And uh, so use the parking brake. You're going to be great and it'll be fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Mallory, yes, busy. Very busy, lots going on. I'm trying to hire more staff and actually I need to find, uh, on that note of not getting the video up this week, Mallory, the other thing that I need to do is I need to hire a video editor. But I need a video editor. I, I've kind of poked around and tried a few people and it's it has not been a fruitful enterprise at this juncture. I need somebody who can use Final Cut Pro. I've decided that, that I've, I've had people use different programs and Premiere Pro and all those types of things. I need somebody who can use Final Cut Pro and edit videos for me. Once I can get somebody in place who will edit videos for me and uses Final Cut Pro, then we're golden. We can move forward because, you know, if something isn't working or they're not doing something according to my standard, then I can show them or I can teach them, hopefully, if they're open to being taught. Uh, then we can move forward with that. But, you know, I've got some good people in place now. And, uh, you know, as I said, Jesse, my assistant, she's doing an awesome work. Uh, I've hired Evan. He's doing animation for me. And hopefully I'm thinking that by April we're going to be able to get some of the videos up with the different kinds of animation on them. And that's going to really, really, like as, as I said in the introduction, uh, it's I'm super excited about that aspect of uh, the new video is coming out, so it's going to be great. Pot, uh, nice to see you live again. Yeah, live every week, Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're here. And uh, for everybody here on the live stream, everybody tuning in, watching on the replay, Pasture Driver's Test First Time Course Package is on sale, flash sale. It's on sale till tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., $19.97 U.S., guaranteed to pass your driver's test. Defensive driving and winter driving smart uh, added as a bonus courses. Both of those will reduce your chances of being involved in a crash. And we've had some issues about winter driving. The winter driving course will definitely give you a lot of skills, techniques, and abilities to keep yourself safe when you're driving in the winter time. So check that over out 
over at the Smart Drive Test website. And as I said, it's on sale until tomorrow morning for $19.97 for those three terrific, great courses. Uh, Michael, like 60 meters away from the intersection, I can't see the sign, but indeed to determine whether the right lane is a right turn only. Uh, are there some right turn only uh, lane signs overhead 100 meters from the intersection? Michael, there's not. As a general rule, there's not signs that are going to tell you it's a right turning lane only. And in my experience with most intersections, most dedicated right turning lanes are going to be slip lanes. They're not going to be a right turning lane that's dedicated specifically for right turning traffic. So I don't know of any signs off the top of my head. Maybe some of the other smart drivers here watching on the live stream or on the replay can help you out with how you would know that. Uh, maybe there's an intersection that you're thinking of that you could send me an address and I can have a look at it uh, and uh, we'll try and help you out there. Uh, Rocky, uh, thank you so much, Mr. August, for the answers and now I see what you meant. Anyway, I'm taking off now and see you next week. Uh, have a great night, Rocky. All the best, my friend. And thank you for hanging out and uh, participating in the live stream. That's always really great, my friend. Thank you. Um, okay, so Michael says, uh, speaking of the right turn only sign overhead, I saw some signs with black background and white arrows overhead at the end of the lane near the intersection. Okay, so those are the signs, Michael, that you're looking for in terms of lane designation signs. And uh, just let me have a look here. Lane, does, lane usage signs. Here we go. Okay, so lane usage signs. These are the signs that you're looking for, uh, Michael, in terms of what the lane that you're in is used for. So the one... The sign at the top is left turning only. So if you're in the left lane, you can only turn left. If you're in the right lane, you can either go straight through or you can turn left. And the one at the bottom is left turning only. Now, if you're in a right turning lane, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to have an arrow pointing right and you're only going to be able to turn right. So those are your lane designation uh, signs that are going to tell you what you can do in that lane, whether you can turn right only, proceed straight and turn right, or just proceed straight. Because doing those other things, any other action in that sign but is contrary to the sign is an action prohibited. Okay, so have a look for those signs. Jose, how are you, my friend? It is going very well, and we are, yes, indeed, having a great, sign, a great day for sure. Uh, one of the things this morning, <laughs> Of course, it's winter time, it's February. I always struggle a little bit in February in terms of, you know, keeping going and being motivated and those types of things. And I was watching a motivational talk oh, it was months ago and it was a naval officer who was giving, you know, probably a West Point address. And uh, he said, the first thing you need to do, you know, to keep yourself motivated is get up in the morning and make your bed. And uh, then you can know that you've accomplished something at the beginning of your day. So this morning I got up and made my bed and you know, my bedroom, I walk past it as I go to the kitchen. So I look in and I see my bed all nice and made and I think, I got something done today. <laughs> you know, because working on the computer and getting videos done and you know, writing in books and those types of things, it's, it's all kind of abstract, right? It's out there on the internet. Whereas, you know, seeing your bed made is something very tangible. Uh, that you've done during the day so it keeps the motivation going especially this time of year when it's when we're, we're feeling a bit blue with the kind of gray skies and the yucky melting snow and dirt and everything uh, so <laughs> there's something you can do to kind of keep your motivation up uh, during the winter blues uh, Tyler the other day I forgot to put my car in park and was like and was like why isn't it starting <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tyler, you're not the only one that has had that happen to you. That has happened to a number of drivers and myself included that you forget to put it in park, especially if you drive manual transmission and you get in somebody's vehicle and you forgot to put it in park and you're like, why isn't this working? And then you look down and you're like, oh, it's not in park. <laughs> so yeah, don't feel too bad about that. Uh, Epic, another sign that isn't common, but common usage in Pennsylvania. It's the right turn signal, which means right turn is permitted. 
but it can't be used with a no turn on the right signs. I uh, saw this on the in the Pennsylvania Department of Transport manual. And excellent, thank you for that. Jose, I've learned a lot because of you. Thank you very much. Jose, you are most welcome, my friend. So happy that we can help out. Angeline, this is actually why I favor the right lane, uh, but occasionally a right turn only arrow will mess me up. <laughs> I think it would mess me up too a bit, Angelina. Uh, all right, so yes, so I did talk about the special, the pasture driver's test first time on flash special until tomorrow. Uh, driver's test, uh, let's see, we got another comment here I'll answer. Uh, okay, so John had asked me a question about Google Maps for the purposes of driving as a truck or bus driver. Yes, Google will work for you and there are apps that you can buy for your phone that are specifically for commercial vehicles. You have to keep in mind that Google Maps is not going to give you low overpasses and bridges and they're not going to give you commercial routes for trucks and buses because there are a lot of roads, most res residential roads, that you cannot go on with a truck or bus and Google will not tell you this, okay? You have to figure this out as you're driving. 2016, when I went back driving truck for a couple of weeks, the navigation system in the truck went out, stopped working, and I had to use my phone. Now, works really well, but you have to drive and look at the driver, at the road signs, because there are a lot of road signs that are no truck routes, and you have to figure out which routes you can't be on with a commercial vehicle, whether that's a tractor trailer, you know, a dump truck, or whether you, that's on with the bus. Wendy was here earlier and is going to drive coaches. So you can't go on those roads with commercial vehicles. So know that that Google Maps isn't going to help you out with that. But there are commercial atlases and those types of things. And most industrial areas where you're going to be going, most bus stations and whatnot are going to be on major routes where you can take your commercial vehicle in there, okay? Uh, DC, hey, I've become an expert at getting people unstuck in the snow, three people so far. So you know how to hook up the toe strap, you don't hook it up to the bumper. <laughs> end up being one of those YouTube videos where you pull the, you know, rip the fairing off and those types of things. So yes, awesome. Getting people unstuck and rocking the vehicle. That's another thing. And if you haven't seen that, have a look at the video with uh, my friend, Willie. We got the vehicle stuck in a bit of snow and he, I was showing him how to rock the vehicle to get it unstuck so we could get out of the snow. So uh, passed my knowledge test without studying. I only saw one of his videos 30 minutes before and remember not the right answer the, uh, that makes the most sense. Yes, Angela, <laughs> pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. And that's definitely the truth when it comes to your learner's test and doing your theory. Uh, make sure that you read the question, pick out the keywords, make sure that you answer, read all of the choices. And you know, most of the time, uh, there's four choices on a learner's test, a theory test. Most of the time, two of the possible answers can be eliminated right off the top. Then it's a matter of taking the two others and figuring out which one is going to be the best answer uh, for your selection when you're doing your theory test at the DMV or the test center, okay? And there's some videos here, uh, learner's test, make sure you have a look at those and that'll definitely help you to study for your learner's test and get your learner's permit. Uh, Mallory, just wondering if you have any short videos on how to drive through a toll booth. Uh, no, I don't because we don't have any toll booths here. Uh, we do, next time I go to the island, they have toll booths onto the ferry and I'll definitely have to do a video at that juncture for you, Mallory. Uh, thanks for your time on my way to get a cell phone holder so I can see the maps. So excited, Angelina, all the best. Have a great night, my friend. Blessed, my friend, how are you? Uh, Tyler, go get a shovel that's foldable so you can dig yourself out. Yes, and uh, on that note, Tyler, most of the winter kits will come with a shovel. And uh, have a look at the seven gifts for car enthusiasts. And I talk about one of the survival kits that I recommended. It has a really excellent shovel in it. It's a nice solid aluminum shovel that's light and stores well in your vehicle. 
Uh, Bass 3, just want to say thanks for the vids. Pass my air brakes written test and class 2 written test first try. That is awesome. Congratulations, Bass. Uh, so glad that we could help out. And thank you for stopping back and letting us know that you were successful. Uh, Pot, uh, apologies if there's been asked before. If a four vehicles come to a four-way stop sign at the same time, you're supposed to cooperate with one another, right? Thank you. Uh, Pot, you can rest easy. That's never going to happen. I've never had that happen. Maybe two vehicles coming to a four-way stop sign at the same time, but four vehicles at the same time is rare and unlikely. But yeah, it's basically about cooperation, figuring out who's going to go first. Somebody's going to go first, right? Uh, and if you just pause, then somebody else is going to take the initiative and they're going to go because people aren't, don't want to wait around at a at a four-way stop sign, right? Somebody's going to go, and they're going to go pretty quickly. So uh, just take your time and go. Uh, Blessed, I wanted to get a dash cam. Which brand would you suggest? Uh, Blessed, I have a Garmin dash cam. It's a little bit more expensive, but um, it is a good dash cam. It's It's been, it's been the, the video quality isn't as high as I would like, but it depends what you want as well. Whether you just want a front-facing dash cam or you want a front-facing with a rear-facing dash cam as well. So it's going to kind of, you know, the other thing I would suggest is figure out what your bu budget is and then go on Amazon and have a look at the ratings and see which ones are going to work better for you. Uh, Michael, I don't know how to drive manual cars. I have a friend coming from the UK and he teased me that people living in the North America are dumb. Do people there drive manual cars often? Okay, so Michael, this is the way it is with manual cars. In North America, we have 85% automatic cars and 15% manual. In Europe and the UK, it's the opposite. It's 85% manual cars and 15% of the cars are automatic. So it's just the reverse of what it is here. Uh, Ray, uh, thank you so much for your vids. I passed my N first time. Uh, keep it up. You are most welcome. Congratulations on passing your license. That is awesome, my friend. DC, would you consider doing a live stream on a long drive or road trip, something like that? Uh, yes. When would you like that, uh, DC? I can definitely do that for you. All right. So we're going to wrap it up here for tonight. And no, just take note. Pass your driver's test first time. Course package guaranteed to pass your driver's test as well. The defensive and winter driving course is smart. Throwing in as a bonus. Right now, you can pick that up for $19.97 over at the Smart Drive Test website. All the best. Thank you very much for participating in the live stream. You passed your driver's license in the last couple of weeks. Congratulations. You have a driver's test coming up this week. All the best with that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.